An excerpt from Surviving the Apocalypse, Understanding and Fighting Through the Coming Emergency, by Thomas F. Pollock. Chapter 1. Zombie Bugs Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Most of medical history has focused on three things. One, fixing broken body parts. Two, preventing the broken stuff from getting infected, or as they used to say in the old, old days, putrefying. And three, fighting fevers, which often came associated with assorted rashes, bumps, and festering pustules. As medicine started to get better organized, and thanks to the invention of the microscope, the causes of putrefaction and fevers became clearer. Doctors started referring to numbers two and three as infection control. They still do, although these days it's more like infection out of control. With the advent of a ballooning population of antibiotic-resistant bacteria and a simultaneous abdication, especially in North America, of business and government efforts to deal responsibly with the crisis. In fact, one could say our entire medical care system has itself been infected, not with microbes, but with a mindset that risks destroying our chief means of physical defense against bacterial disease, while blocking an existing, thoroughly tested alternative solution that could supplement or replace antibiotics. This attitude also threatens the research structure from which come most new treatments and drugs and compromises the effectiveness of regulatory bodies charged with assuring the safety of both drugs and medical procedures. It prices drugs out of the reach of patients and in some cases consigning whole groups to a choice between bankruptcy or death. As will be seen in chapters 3, 5, and 6, it also erodes the altruistic character of the educational system that trains doctors, nurses, researchers, medical technicians, and hospital administrators. It drives graduates into a form of debt servitude that curbs their scientific and social independence. It forces inappropriate and coercive treatments on some patients, including the mentally ill, and helps to impoverish society by encouraging business tax dodges on a massive scale. Several traits mark this mindset, including a persistent belief in magic bullet quick fixes and a kind of tunnel vision that fails to consider the long-term knock-on effects of its actions. It is impatient, heavy-handed, and gravitates towards simplistic all-or-nothing approaches to problems, but its chief characteristic is a single-minded focus on monetary profit as the overriding motive for all medical decisions. The latter has roots in the earliest years of medical history, but has bloomed like a malevolent weed with the coming to dominance of today's multinational corporations and the concentration in their hands of the economic and political control of society. By its nature, it both exhibits and provokes resistance. Factor in the myriad ways in which our medical structures affect and are affected by other basic systems, from food production to climate, and the potential for mischief is vast. To understand the processes that brought this about and identify ways to reverse them requires a look using the clarifying lens of systems theory at the past at the original goals of medicine and medical education, and how the seeds of subversion were planted.